We're reading the scriptures this evening in the book of Joshua, the 24th chapter. The 24th chapter of the book of Joshua, we turn to the word of God tonight. And once again, could I say that it is indeed a privilege for me to be here with you, to join with you in this gospel campaign. Now, I don't know how you feel, but I know one thing for sure. The welcome to uh, this area is certainly very warm because... I'm just uh, I'm ready to turn over to the other side. I'm not well done. I'm not well cooked. So uh, it certainly is a, a great pleasure. And uh, it's good to have the warmth uh, and the fellowship of God's people. And I trust that even as we preach tonight, that God's people will continue to pray and lay hold on God, for we're dealing with precious, never-dying souls this evening. Now, the book of Joshua, chapter 24, and we're reading just a few verses from this passage of God's word because of time. And we'll read from verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, Choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should serve, or that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up out and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore will we also serve the Lord for he is our God. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that he hath done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves that ye have chosen you the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God will we serve, and his voice will we obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold this stone shall be a witness unto us. For it hath heard all the words of the Lord which he spake unto us. It shall be therefore a witness unto you, lest ye deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart, every man unto his inheritance. And we know that God will bless his word to our hearts for Jesus' sake. Amen. Give a bow for a word of prayer. Let's keep our Bibles open and let's bow our heads and close our eyes in prayer. O oh God, our Father, we thank Thee for Thy Word tonight. We thank Thee that Thy Word is truth. We bless Thee that Thy Word is forever settled in heaven. We thank Thee, our God, that this is not the Word of man, that this is God's Word to a sinful man and to this lost and sinful world. And O oh God, our Father, we thank Thee that it is a Word of salvation. We thank thee for that word of pardon that we find in thy word. 
We bless and we praise Thee that it is a word of comfort to the weary and the weak. O oh God, as we march on our way to heaven and home. But O oh God, our Father, we realize that there is a word of condemnation in Thy word to those that know Thee not. O oh God, our Father, in Thy mercy tonight, save in this meeting. We pray that the tide may rise in this mission. Oh God, our Father, we pray that even tonight, Lord, that you'll bring the waves, oh God, of conviction upon the sinner. And oh God, strike them under conviction of sin. Oh God, help us to preach with power tonight. Oh Spirit of God, come upon us tonight with power and give us that power that we need that we might preach as thus, saith the Lord. Oh God, take away every distracting thought every other thing that would enter in to disturb every other movement, our God, that would try and distract our God tonight, still us, we pray. And, oh God, we pray that there may be hearts that will hear and heed the word of God. Oh God, we think of the word that our sister read. Come unto me. Oh, may sinners hear that tonight. Oh, may they hear, may they feel the tuggings of the Spirit of God. And even tonight, Lord, save them, we pray. And bring them unto thyself. And so to this end, our God, we commit this preaching to thee. Lord, you know how helpless we are. You know how unworthy we are. O oh God, our Father, O oh God, we ask of thee that thou will come thyself and work thine own work in this meeting. And O oh God, may the angels of heaven and the saints on air rejoice even this night over sinners coming home. O oh God, answer prayer. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. My text this evening is found in this 15th verse, a very, very familiar passage of God's Word and a very familiar verse, and yet, my friend, it never fails to bring that challenge that men and women need today concerning the great issues of eternity. Joshua said unto the people, Choose you this day whom ye will serve. Now Joshua was an old man. He was coming to the end of his journey just like you and I, friend, will come to the end of the journey, perhaps some of us very soon. And Joshua, as he was coming to the end, he remembered the conquest of Canaan. He remembered how that God had blessed them and how that God had brought them in to the promised land. Now Joshua is gathering the people together. He wants to counsel them. He wants to give the farewell counsel to Israel. And he's urging Israel to cling to the Lord and to forsake the gods of wood and of stone. He was, con he was contending for the Lord with his people. He was telling them not only of what it would mean to have the blessing of God upon them, but he also told them what it would mean if they would deny the Lord and would continue in a path of rebellion and of sin and of rejection. And so we find he brings the elders together. He brings the heads of the people together. He brings the judges together. He brings the officers together. And then we find that he looks at them fair and squarely in the face and he preaches unto them. He brings them the challenge from the Lord himself. And you will notice, my friend, what Joshua said. It wasn't a soft little message today. My, we live in an age when people today feel that, my, we should soften this message of the gospel. They tell us today we'd get on far better if we go into a neighborhood and tell the people how good they are. But they just need to be that little bit better. My friend, when I read the word of God, God tells me that man is not good, for there is none that doeth good, no, not one. God tells me something else. God says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. My dear friend, if you speak to a person, you go into a home and you want to be popular today, what do you tell them? You tell them how good they are, how nice people they are, how great friends they are. But oh, the faithful man of God he must preach the word of God. And God tells man that from the crown of his head to the sole of his foot, there's naught but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores that have never been bound up. 
neither mollified with ointment, oozing out the bruises of sin, pouring out that awful ooze from that awful disease of sin that's upon the soul. And oh, dear friend, the first thing that he said to them, if you look in verse 14, it says, Now, therefore, fear the Lord. That's the first thing that he said to the people. He said, you must fear the Lord. There's got to be a fear of God upon the people. And I want to tell you, my friend, in this day and generation in which we live, as I walk amongst the teeming multitudes of men and women day after day, I find the tragedy is this. The fear of God is gone from our nation. The fear of God is gone. And men today stand like little puppets as they are and try to defy the very God of heaven. The Bible tells us, my friend, that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Oh, how we ought to fear God. He is so mighty. He is so great and we are so small. He sitteth on the circle of the world. And man is but as a grasshopper in the sight. Now you see these little defiant grasshoppers everywhere defying God Almighty. Yes, my friend. And yet God is sovereign. But I'm glad tonight that God's still in control. I'm glad tonight that...